Welcome to this channel, which is devoted to a reading and better understanding of the book Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross. As you recall, St. John told us that there are four passions, and the first kind of passion is joy. There are six kinds of blessings that cause joy. Most people would definitely consider these things blessings, and sometimes they may be, but they can also be false blessings if we latch onto them and take inappropriate joy from them. Doing so causes us to be wrapped up in them and give us less time and room for God. The first type of these blessings is called temporal blessings. We can think of these things as events when we receive or achieve things that we really greatly value, such as riches, ranks, or office. Way back in the first book, we discussed how we should not be desiring these things because they're creatures. We should likewise not take joy in receiving them. It is clear how vain a thing it is for men to rejoice in riches, titles, rank, office, and other such things we tend to desire. For if a man was a better servant of God for being rich, then he ought to rejoice in riches. But in fact, riches are usually a cause of his giving offense to God. St. John tells us that we should not rejoice in riches since we would expose ourselves to great danger. St. John provides us with some verses from Scripture that shows that wealth is a near occasion of sin. If thou be rich, thou shalt not be free from sin. And also, Amen, I say to you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. St. John tells us that temporal blessings do not necessarily of themselves cause sin, yet, through the frailty of its affection, the heart of man habitually clings to them and fails God, which is a sin, for to fail God is a sin. The 61st Psalm says, If riches abound, set not your heart upon them. Scripture also says that he that loves riches shall reap no fruit from them. It follows, then, that a man must neither rejoice in riches when he has them, nor when a family member or friend has them, unless they help to serve God. For if ever it is allowable to rejoice in them, it will be when they are spent and employed in the service of God, for otherwise no profit will be derived from them. There is also another grievous evil, which I have seen under the sun, and that is riches kept to hurt the owner. St. John tells us that the same thing applies to titles, office, or honors. We shouldn't take joy in them if it isn't clear whether God is better served by them. For what doth it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? St. John adds, Neither is there cause for rejoicing in children, because they are many, or rich, or endowed with natural graces and talents, and the good things of fortune, but only if they serve God. Now, if people don't read this chapter carefully, they might come away with the mistaken impression that St. John is telling us that we shouldn't value our children. However, he isn't telling us that at all. After all, the family is a reflection of the kingdom of heaven. This passage is mostly about our priorities. We need to remember what our job is as parents. It's to raise our children to become increasingly closer to God and hope that someday they will gain salvation. And when we take joy in our kids scoring a goal in peewee soccer and don't pay any attention when he picks up a Bible on his own and starts reading it, our joy is grossly misdirected. Being star athletes don't get our kids any closer to heaven. It is also a vain thing for men to desire to have children, as do some who trouble and disturb everyone with their desire for them, since they know not if such children will be good and serve God. What St. John is saying here is probably even more applicable in our own time than in his time. For example, when somebody has a child for the primary purpose of carrying on their genes or their family name, that's not a very good reason to desire to have children. Another example is when couples have trouble conceiving and they don't patiently wait and rely on the grace of God. They, in effect, do an end run around God if they try to conceive artificially. It's as if they feel that if they want a child, they're entitled to one. And children in this situation, in effect, are viewed as something as possessions. Scripture tells us not to take joy in insignificant and transient world joys. It is better to go in the house of mourning than in the house of feasting, for in that we are put in mind of the end of all, and the living thinketh what is to come. The heart of the wise is where there is mourning, and the heart of fools is where there is mirth. It would therefore be vanity for a woman or her husband to rejoice in their marriage, when they don't clearly know that they are better serving God. 
All this he says to show that we must not set our rejoicings upon any other thing than that which tends to the service of God, since the rest is vanity and a thing which profits not. For joy that is not according to God can bring the soul no profit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment of Ascent of Mount Carmel. We'll be back again in about a week, perhaps two, because the next one's a long one, with another installment. In the meantime, please pray for the church. Oh,